Welcome to Winds of Change. Are you the type of person who believes that what goes around comes around? Our first topic for today is karma. We are joined by Stefan Wiedner, founder of Young Blood Coaching and a firm believer in the laws of karma. Stefan is also the co-founder of Numi.com, a website specializing in helping individuals find the ideal coach. Welcome to the show, Stefan. Thank you, Jeevi. Stefan, tell me a little bit about your journey and how you discovered karma. Well, it all started uh, in about 10 years ago. Uh, I met my now wife and we decided to go to South America. And that just seemed like a wild and crazy thing for me to do. Uh, I was on this career path that was taking me in a certain direction. So we traveled, we were uh, touring through Peru and Ecuador. And um, I came across the book Seven Years in Tibet, which is now a movie with Brad Pitt, as you probably mm -hmm. are familiar with. And, um, and from there, my interest in Buddhism just grew. I, I picked up a book about uh, the Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama's journey when uh, China invaded Tibet. And it just grew and grew until um, I picked up a book at the library one day. I went into the library and I, I was struggling with my career and my company and what was I going to do? And so I went into the Buddhist section and was flipping through a whole bunch of books. And I came across a book called The Diamond Cutter. And my dad's a jeweler and that's how he, he uh, basically raised our family. And mm -hmm. so I thought, uh, I'll just grab it. And I didn't, I didn't at all uh, flip through it or read it or learn anything about who the author was. I went home, read it, and right at the end it said, um, if you're interested in this material, uh, there are study groups in a variety of cities across North America, so please check us out on our website. So I type in the website, and boom, right there it says, Geshe Michael Roach, who is the author of the book, in Vancouver, March 5th, and I thought, whoa, <laughs> this is strange, things are happening here that I had not predicted. And uh, so I went and heard this uh, Geshe Michael Roach speak and uh, from there have been uh, studying the materials and reading more and more books about karma. Mm -hmm. What I'm understanding then is karma exclusive to Buddhism because I always thought that karma was a non-religious concept. Well yeah that's that's true uh, you're correct and the the teachings that I've been learning have been handed down through uh, Buddhist teachers from mm -hmm. generation to generation to generation. And um, I suspect there are a lot of common information between different religious sects, but overall the, the concept of karma is the same. Okay, let's start with a basic question. What is karma? Well, uh, as you mentioned earlier, karma is what goes around comes around. So the laws of karma state that um, it, karma is like, uh, I guess a good metaphor to use is that of seeds and plants. Okay. And so in order for you to harvest a life of great fruits and trees and plants that are beautiful and, uh, and lovely to look at and harvest fruit from, then you need to plant the equivalent type of seed. Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly planting weeds, so by being a, a, an evil or angry person, then you're gonna harvest plants that are weed-like in nature. Mm -hmm. What about, Stefan, what about people that, say for example, if you, you're in a, in a situation where you've got hardship in your life mm -hmm. and you've got, whether it's a constant death that surrounds you, constant ill health that surrounds you, but you're a really good person. Mm -hmm. Like, what does that, how does karma work there? Or it could be vice versa as well, where you are a criminal mm -hmm. and, you know, have, so does that mean that if the criminal does bad, he will get bad, but yet, or she will get bad, whichever criminal it is, yeah. but yet they're living a life of luxury. So right. how does that work? Well, there are, the belief with karma is that uh, what I do today will affect my future sometime down the road. Um, and so, what you're harvesting now is a result of something that was planted many, many years ago, perhaps even past lives okay. ago. And so if you are living riches, um, it's not necessarily a reflection of your current being. Okay. You're just harvesting the fruits of your previous labors, so to speak. And uh, you can count that as good fortune mm -hmm. in this lifetime or in, in this current period in your life, mm -hmm. or uh, as negative fortune if you happen to be experiencing a lot of hardship. Mm -hmm. 
So do karma and reincarnation go in hand in hand? Uh, I, I think so. That, okay. My per personal belief is that they do because uh, the, the karma that we're experiencing, so the way we experience the world is a product of our own minds. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that this table has uh, table qualities, but it only appears to me as a table because of my own mind, mm -hmm. the, the, the seeds that are currently harvesting in my own mm -hmm. mind. And uh, a dog would not necessarily look at this and think, this, that's a table. They mm -hmm. would think, that's shelter. I can crawl under there and sleep, mm -hmm. for example. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, and this is going to sound like a very silly question, but if yeah. I seeded this table to look like a plant, will it start to look like a plant in one year, five years, ten years? <laughs> well, we, um, all we can control is uh, the deeds that we we do right now, okay. that we perform right now. So as long as we're continually uh, planting good seeds, we'll harvest the seeds that, that we want to see. But okay. I can't just willfully have the table change into something else. Okay. Now, Stephen, if you, say you start planting the seeds today, mm -hmm. and if we talk about reincarnation, say those, we don't see the growth of those seeds for many years to come. Mm -hmm. How much patience is required to keep planting and keep planting and hope that one day you'll get back what you've seeded? Um, I think that there's definitely um, some discipline that's required with practicing any, uh, any faith or any religion or any spirituality. So you, you still need to practice and put forth a good amount of effort and mm -hmm. consistent effort is really also quite key. That said, uh, in my short amount of time that I've been around the information around uh, karma, I've experienced some really tremendous results. Uh, and sometimes they're just little things, but mm -hmm. I just can't help but think, wow, this is incredible. I, I, I'm, I'm already experiencing tremendous results because of a few little things I did last week or the week before. Mm -hmm. Would you be comfortable sharing an example of such a seed? Well, I think I started out with my journey, and I, I believe uh, I, by the fact that I opened this book, got to the end of it, and then right there on this website is saying, go see Geshe Michael Roach. I mean, that's, that's a seed that was being harvested. It was obviously caused by um, past deeds. Mm -hmm. uh, but in, I would say in the shorter term, in the last three years, I've started up a software company, and um, I had a perhaps serendipitous experience where uh, to, to start it all off, I was uh, meeting with a friend of mine and I was telling her what I was doing. I'm, I was practicing as a coach and doing a little bit of software development stuff here and there and kind of dabbling all around. And she said, oh, well, I just met uh, a friend of mine in London and he's doing this e-coaching thing. Maybe you ought to connect with him. Well, next thing you know, I'm talking to him for two hours on the phone and um, a month later, we're business partners. So, mm -hmm. Would you not call that coincidence? Um, some might. Sure. Uh, and I don't think that had I uh, done the necessary work beforehand to sort of prepare myself for that experience, I, it would have just come and gone. I wouldn't have seized the opportunity that was there. Mm -hmm. What has been your greatest learning so far about karma? Hmm. <clears throat> I think my greatest learning is about doing small gestures, small deeds every day. Mm -hmm. And that is what amounts to this plentiful garden that you can harvest. Okay. With that, we have to go for a break. We'll be right back after these messages. Into something the Dalai Lama said once upon a time. They, someone asked them, they said, well, what if, what if scientists prove that reincarnation doesn't exist? What will you do? And he said, we'll change. We'll change our thinking on it.